Cutler Beckett, Lord Beckett, Mr. Good Business Beckett. Whatever the title, he made his presence felt in the Pirate series. Starting with Dead Man's Chest, the atmosphere is bleak and depressing as an army of troops come sailing and marching into Port Royal. Beckett introduces himself by ending Elizabeth and Will's wedding, an act I'm sure they appreciated. Warren in hand, Beckett calls for the arrest of Will Turner. Governor Swan tries to intervene, stating that he is governor of Port Royal and that Beckett has no authority to arrest him. Beckett shuts that down by affirming he is Lord and has the power to do so. This assertion of political status becomes a theme throughout Beckett's character. Governor Swan grabs the Warren attendant for Will, but is puzzled because it states it's for Elizabeth. Beckett, he responds with some dry humor saying, my mistake and gives another warrant intended for Will. Both Elizabeth and Will are to be hung for allowing Jack Sparrow Captain. Captain Jack Sparrow to escape. There is one thing that shows up in this movie, a map. Specifically, a global map with new areas landmarked every day. The power of an expanding empire and the East India Trading Company flows through Beckett's mind. However, no matter how much territory is marked and how far fleets can travel, Beckett wants one thing. Jack's compass. Will Turner arrives at Beckett's quarters and what will be Beckett's signature motto strikes a deal with Will to give Jack a full pardon for the compass. This full pardon is a crucial point in the idea of negotiating. Will thought it would have to be a simple sword fight to get the compass, but Beckett sees the value in bargaining, i.e. business. This, in Beckett's mind, is the new way of thinking. Obviously, the deal is not going to be fair. Governor Swan knows there is only one pardon, and that's for Jack. He escorts Elizabeth to leave Port Royal. Unfortunately, Beckett's right-hand man, Mercer, kills the captain who is to take them and has the letter Governor Swanson signed to be brought to the king. Elizabeth escapes while Governor Swan is arrested. The balance of power has now shifted in Beckett's hands. Returning to Beckett's chambers, Elizabeth is there with a pardon but needs Beckett to sign and seal them. She pulls out a gun and Beckett, instead of being scared or anxious, he is rather stone cold with a mere reply of, I'm listening intently. He says he wants the compass because it points to a vast treasure of what one desires, not simply just Isla de Muerta. Threats do not scare him. They are simply tactics. He knows with his power that people like Elizabeth need him alive. It is merely a matter of negotiating and waiting for the prize to be delivered. Later, Governor Swan is delivered to Beckett as Beckett tells him the location of Elizabeth, Jack, and the crew is known. They will face death unless Governor Swan relinquishes his title as governor, his influence in London, and his loyalty to the East India Trading Company. Governor Swan complies. Again, the power-hungry dynamic is shown as Beckett and it doesn't matter to him how he gets it, and people are merely pawns as he works to move his way up the ranks. Through a series of events, James Norrington returns with Jack's pardon and something better than Jack's compass, the heart of Davy Jones. The final domino has fallen as Lord Beckett and the British Empire are now the ultimate threat. How does one show the audience he is a piece of shit? That's right, you have a child killed. Port Royal is now under complete control of Beckett, as the political landscape is now a dictatorship, the right to assembly, habeas corpus, legal counsel, and a jury by peers are all suspended to those who are committed or were involved or associated with piracy. As Beckett stated in the last film, pirates are a dying breed. The blank spaces on the map are being filled in. However, as with Jack's compass, there is one thing Beckett does not have that he needs, and that's the knowledge of the Nine Pieces of Eight and Shipwreck's Cove. For this, he needs pirate prisoners to negotiate, but Davy Jones is on a killing spree, wiping them all out. Beckett and men aboard the Flying Dutchman, and this is where we see how powerful Beckett is. Beckett knows with Jones' heart he controls Davy Jones, and for him to comply will have his heart aboard the Flying Dutchman. Davy Jones! A man who struck fear and intimidation in the last film is now subdued like a dog on a leash as Beckett scolds him that he is in charge and Jones needs to take commands from him. Here, we learn Beckett ordered Jones to kill his pet, the Kraken. Beckett drops a line that summarizes this entire scene. The immaterial has become immaterial. There is no need for Krakens or dangerous fish pirates. 
the material world only strives and cares for one thing, currency. Beckett is great at negotiating with others to get what he wants. He gets Jack to comply with him on bringing the pirates out of Shipwreck's Cove in exchange for Jack's safety. Beckett is seen as committed. He's soft-spoken, impactful, and intimidating. Jack, meanwhile, he acts like himself as he goofs around with a painting, engulfing Beckett's drink, and the whole toss-off between the fan and the compass is just hilarious. Later on, Will is now with Beckett in an otherwise never imagined scene as he is sitting drinking tea with Beckett as Davy Jones arrives. We see the strings being plotted within Beckett as he had not told Jones of Jack being alive. Beckett is a cunning man who knows what to say and what not to. While he is upset at Will for telling Jones that Jack is alive, Beckett still controls Jones because of his heart and Calypso. He plays Jones by shooting down any distancing Jones has by stating he decided to put Calypso in a human form. Beckett agrees to free Elizabeth in exchange for Will using the compass to Shipwreck's Cove. Jack did his duty in the deal as the pirates are now out of Shipwreck's Cove and ready to fight Beckett and the fleet. However, we visually see the strength Beckett brings by having countless ships emerge through the fog. On the island, Beckett amusingly tells them to look to their left and they will see the Grand Architect. He then throws the compass at Jack and tells him to step up and claim his reward. Then, to add salt to the wound, he moves away and has Jack stand next to Jones. He tells them that they will all die at their fight, but only most will die if they flee. He is confident and believes there is only success in his path. In the final battle, Beckett is amused, thinking Jack was waiting for him to comply with the agreement, but Beckett orders the cannons of the Endeavor to be ready. Loyalty is no longer the new currency. Beckett grins and tells Jack, it's just good business. However, of all the cards Beckett had in his hand, there was one he neglected, Davy Jones dying. The Flying Dutchman remerges through the water, no longer quote unquote cursed, and instead of attacking the Black Pearl, it turns with the Pearl in the direction of the Endeavor. Beckett's one flaw proves disastrous, a man who thought he controlled the strings and will come out victorious through negotiating and political power. His plan crumbles, and he is seen as shocked and defeated. The men are screaming for orders, but the only words Beckett can bring out are, it's just good business. Men are jumping overboard, and the endeavor is being demolished. And I do not care what anyone says, this is one of the greatest deaths on screen. Beckett walks down the stairs as the camera is in slow motion. With each step, the one behind him blows up. Looking at the surrounding with debris flying everywhere, he accepts his demise and is engulfed in flames and killed. The last shot is of him sinking into the water and being caught on the flag bearing the East India Trading Company. Ironic. Beckett was a man with power, a man viewers saw on screen and knew he was a threat. The character within him reflects British imperialism at the time. A man who does not care for people's well-being as evident with the hangings and dictatorship of Port Royal. A man who can negotiate and make deals with others to try and come out as the winner in the end only to die on his actions. Beckett truly is a great villain. Thank you for watching.